And in this section right here, what we're going to be doing is giving you guys just a basic introduction to databases. Itty bitty. So the very first thing that we probably need to do, Mr. Logan, is what? I don't know. Explain what a database is. Well, explain what a database is. Well, go ahead. Explain to us what a database is. Well, pretty obvious from the name what it can do. You know, obviously store data. Now, the actual, the, the main point is you, anything could store data. I mean, you could store a lot of data in like a text file. Okay. But what if you had like tens of thousands of records in a text file? That's not going to be fun to go and like try to find certain records or get just like, like basically specify how you want the data to like given back to you. That's where the real point of a database is, is because... Um, is the way you can use it to gather the data back. Use uh, like, like where you can group by different uh, values, order by different values. Like, say you have a whole bunch of data, it all has a d has a date with it, but it was all entered at different times. Well, you can actually have the the database, in our case MySQL, go in there and reorder the data for you when you ask for it back. So, of course, uh, uh, C uh, SQL stands for Structured Query Language, and that's the point for it to structure the data when you call it back. Whoa. You know, I actually knew that about the uh, SQL. Did you? Yeah. <laughs> I looked it up. I knew what a database was. <laughs> Liar. I knew how to could, we, <laughs> could we get away with saying, yes, a database is for storing data, period? <laughs> I'm not going to get quite as complex as that. And could we go a little bit more simple and say in MySQL that a database is a container for tables? Right. So that's so it's fair to say that a database atom is a container that holds tables. Awesome. The database itself, this is just kind of a weird way of looking at it, but the database doesn't hold data per se. It holds Tupperware that holds data. It's like a refrigerator tables? holding Tupperware. Oh, there he goes. <laughs> he got cranked up. Now we're in the fridge. Hey! <laughs> if Tupperware means tables, then I guess you're right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's like a big refrigerator holding the Tupperware okay, so, that right. holds the food. Groovy. I like that. You are you are just rolling now. Man, so what do the tables hold? You. Records? To well... If you say records are fields, then you'd be right, too. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like the expensive Tupperware that's divided up. So uh, let's go back to the old refrigerator <laughs> thing, because I really like that. So the refrigerator would be the database. Right. And in the end, I mean, yes, it holds the fo food, but, I mean, it, looking at the food as actually being the data. But, you know, it's it's more so holding the Tupperware. Ah, uh. Okay, so I mean, no, that's good. That's excellent. You did a great yes. job. Thank you. So, um, so our databases hold tables, and our tables hold. Um, Logan, would you like to <laughs> give that one a shot? No, I know what it is. I know what it is. Okay, it's what fields. It holds fields. Logan <laughs> and fields are. Fields are like a format for storing data, because if. Like, m remember in the variable section where we went over an integer and a string and how it's, like, different data that it can hold? Uh -huh. That's what a field sets up. Like, you can have a field that stores an integer or a field that stores a string. In this case, it's called a char, but string char is basically the same thing okay. inside of, uh, inside of uh, SQL. So, I mean, if you were going to be real loose at looking at it, generally people refer to a table as where you'll find your record set, your actual data, though, right? Right. Okay, very cool. So with that very basic understanding out of the way, let's just get in there and inside of MySQL and actually see how we can create databases, how we can see all of the databases that are available to us, and how we can delete databases. So... <laughs> <laughs> Squip it. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. So, uh, so what, do we, what do you think we need to do first? Well, let's let's create a database. All right. Before we create the database, though, for somebody that's sitting new in front of a system where they just installed MySQL, what do they need to do? You'd want to start the server. There you so go. You we need to your. We database. need to get the server running. So what we're going to do is we're just going to open up regular old command prompt, and we're going to switch over to good old K Drive, and I'm going to change directory over to MySQL, and then down one more folder to bin, and we're going to run MySQLD space dash dash S-T-A-N-D-A-L-O-N-E, MySQLD standalone, okay? Go ahead and hit enter. Sounds like a song. And tell us, Logan, real quick, <laughs> what did this do? This actually started a, a database server. What the um, it started the let me see started this started, started the server. 
Yes. <laughs> okay. He's, he really wanted to give a lengthy 20-minute complex description, but he just couldn't get around the fact <laughs> that we just started the server. <laughs> okay, so now that we've got the server running, I can go ahead and close this out without being a problem, right? right? In this in this version of MySQL, you can close this command prompt. In earlier versions, you actually had to leave it running, but in this one, it's you it's you can go ahead and close the close the command prompt. Okay, good. And the server will still be running. Okay, now and now and we can't just start typing in here again, exactly, right? Exactly, cuz it's tying up this window. That's right. We're actually this is now the process that's running, right? Right. So we'll just go ahead and close it out like such and Go ahead and come back and open up another command prompt. Just drag it back down here into the recording area. And again, I'm just going to jump on over to K Drive and we'll just change directory into MySQL and back over into bin. And we're going to fire up the MySQL monitor by simply typing in MySQL and hitting enter. And there you are. You'll notice now instead of a command prompt like C colon backslash or K colon backslash, we now have MySQL and a little flashing cursor. So we're now in the MySQL monitor. We're in that app, and we're now when we, we're typing, we're talking directly to the server. Sound good to you, Logan? Yep, sounds good. So one of the first things you'll see after getting in is uh, that you can type help or backslash h for help. And we'll just go ahead and just take a look at that real quick. So I'll simply type help, and you'll see that we have a series of uh, MySQL commands that we can fire real quick to uh, just do some simple stuff. Help, which really just shows you this, and backslash question mark, same thing. And we can clear, connect. Uh, there's a whole bunch of different things that you can do, and there's a listing of them and a description over to the side. Another thing that you may find uh, very useful is, um, Logan, what do you think? Find very useful. Status. Status, yes. I, I would say so. Uh, in case it's a uh, – I'm just going to type in status. I'm going to put a terminator at the end. I'm going to use a semicolon. And go ahead and press enter. Status is very useful if you've come into some sort of organization that already has MySQL running and you don't know the version or you need to find out how many connections or et cetera, et cetera. Uh, you can do that by running status. Right now, one of the important things that we'll use it for in this VTM is actually seeing what current database we're tied to. And right now, we're not actually using any particular database. Okay, we've just got into my SQL and we're sitting there and we have not told the server that we want to access this refrigerator or this database. Ah. Does that make okay. sense? Yeah. yeah. So basically, you think of it like this. Going into uh, the MySQL is like walking into a room full of refrigerators. And before you open one up, I mean, you got to tell yourself, I want to open up that one, right? Is that fair, Adam? Is it the side-by-side side or the over and under? That's irrelevant. Don't That's what you have to tell yourself. Well, no, you, got, no, you just want to tell yourself, I want to open up that one there. Can it be over and under? So, <clears throat> Whatever you Please. want. Oh, okay. Yeah, sure. It can be over and under <laughs> with the little ice maker on the side. Yay. Okay. So uh, now that we have that out of the way, um, other things, other pieces of information that you can find in here, protocol version, server version over here, um, just, you know, uptime. In this case, we just started at two minutes, ten seconds ago. So status can definitely be handy. Now, our first true command. What I want to do is, you know, I want to get a listing of all of the databases that are available. Um, you know, you walk into a room full of refrigerators, you want to get a listing of all the refrigerators that are available for you to peruse, right? Right. So that's fair. So to peruse. do this, what we need to do is come in here and just simply type in show refrigerator databases. <laughs> show databases. Again, I'm putting a terminator, semicolon at the end. And what we'll do is we'll get a listing of the databases that are available inside of MySQL. Right now, we've got two by default that are put in there when you first install a MySQL to your server or your uh, operating system. We have the database MySQL, and we have test. Now, MySQL stores all sorts of good stuff, and we're going to talk about that more in VTM issue number two. That is the plan, right, Logan? Yes. Okay. So in this, in this case right here, I'm just you know, wanting to just show you really simple stuff. So um, we'll get into that later. So I guess what we want to do is find out how do we create a database, right? Right. That okay. would be nice. Here we go. Create database, and we'll call it BuzzDB. And again, I'll put a Terminator so at the end. Okay, so when you're inside of MySQL, uh -huh. you always put a Terminator? Not all. Logan, you want to talk about that? Okay, once you're working with, uh, like, if you're working, this is once you're down and working with tables and fields, then you're always using a terminator. Or if you're uh, creating stuff, then you would use a terminator. I let's see. 
There are some things that you do not have to use a Terminator with, but I would just suggest get into the habit of using a Terminator with everything that you type inside. Right. Using a Terminator won't mess stuff up. Right. Okay. Some places, leaving it off, it's uh, it'll it's require a Terminator. Right. Yeah. Okay. So uh, we'll go ahead and type in. Again, it's create space database space in your database name. In this case right here, I am calling it BuzzDB. So I'll go ahead and press enter. One note is that uh, that is case sensitive. So remember the exact case of your database. Okay. And we get query OK, one row affected, uh, the time it takes to do this. Basically what that is saying is, yep, it did it. Now what I want to do is type show databases again, but I'm lazy. Right. There's a history that we uh, have running active for us inside of MySQL, isn't there? Yes, there is. Tell us about this history there, Mr. Logan. Well, if you've if you used either DOS or the command prompt in Windows or Unix or Linux, pressing the up arrow key, as long as you have the system configured that way, the default, pressing the up arrow key in the terminal prompt will give you the previous lines. Pressing up multiple times will give you a whole backlog of stuff you've already So I typed. can press up, and there's where I just created the database. I can press up again. There's the show databases. Press up again. There's when we did status. There's where I did help. Okay. That's all you did. So, and you keep this thing running, and if we uh, disconnect and we connect, it'll still, as long as we still have this server uh, process running, right. it'll still remember everything, yes. right? Yes, you can actually close the monitor, MySQL monitor, and then open it back up, and you still have your backlog of stuff. That's awesome. Okay, it's very handy. You find it handy, don't you? Oh, yes. And sometimes I've, actually, I've actually used stuff that's like a couple of weeks old. <laughs> Just going to think, 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 Oh, there <laughs> it is. <laughs> okay, so let's go ahead and... Uh, Come back down to uh, show databases again. Hit enter. And this time we get a list of database. We have BuzzDB, MySQL, and test. So there's BuzzDB. Now, you ready for this? That's it. That just created our refrigerator, our database. So it's there. That's there. Wow. It's now ready for us to use it. But how do we tell the system that we want to use it? Well, use. Use. Look at that. Oh, That's good. Man. Use Buzz You're a DB. Natural. Hire me now. Terminator, hit enter. Look what we have. Database changed. We're now using Buzz DB. And I can prove this just in case you happen to have forgotten or whatever. <laughs> if we come in here and type status again, current database. By golly, it's there. Buzz DB. <laughs> Whoa. Okay. Pretty handy, huh? So, um,. Getting rid of this database now. Sometimes you may want to actually delete out databases. Um, pretty easy to actually kill it. To get rid of BuzzDB, we can just simply say drop, drop database, and then the name of the database that you want to drop, BuzzDB. Okay? So, again, this is if you need to kill out a database, just simply type in drop database BuzzDB. Logan, real quick, tell us, uh, if there are tables inside this database, and I type this command in, what's going to happen? Are we going to get a are you sure, or are we going to get uh, the database is populated with stuff, can't do? Or nope. You're just going to get a – it'll just tell you how, how much and what it deleted. So okay, there's no <laughs> – as soon as you hit enter, it's gone. So it's pretty unforgiving, right? <laughs> yep. And, and, and that's not that bad here because you're not usually dropping databases, but there are some things that we're going to be taking a look at shortly – that you could accidentally hit enter and do some serious damage yes. to data, right? You can't oh go yes. back? When you're working with no. No one does? Guess it's your own nope. darn fault then. <laughs> you can't Z out? No. <laughs> no, <Nope. So laughs> you can't. Please, be, in, please be very, very careful. So let's go ahead and drop database BuzzDB. Press enter. And now what we'll do is come back in here and we'll tell it to show, show databases. And we only have two available, MySQL and test. I have okay. a feeling that's going to bite me a few times. So um, yeah. the all it takes is getting bit once to <laughs> remember to be careful. So let's go ahead. Well, one last time, I'm going to create it again. Again, I can use history. Just kind of flip back through here until I find create database, BuzzDB. And we've got it created, and I'm doing this so that in the next section we can take advantage of this when we're creating tables. So that's pretty much all I want to talk about in this section right here. Pretty simple? Yeah. Okay, so uh, thanks a lot, guys.